So far, we have studied various equivalence laws in the chapter of mathematical reasoning or mathematical logic. Let us now use those equivalence laws to solve a simple problem. Here we have the task to show that P is equivalent to Q. If it is logically equivalent, then P or Q implies P and Q. Okay. So, how we will show this result? Let us see. We will use two different methods to solve this problem. So, our method one is using the truth table method. Okay. Method one is the truth table method. Fine. So, this is the truth table which we will require to solve our problem. The method of plotting values in a truth table is quite easy. Those who are not aware of how to plot in a truth table, that we first take two true values and then two false values and then we take it alternately if there are two columns only. Okay. And then based on that, we apply the rules that is here p implies q, q implies p and then we solve our problem. So, true implies true gives us true, true implies false gives us false and how we get these results? You can easily check these results by using the equivalence laws what we have seen for the p implies q value. Okay, The equivalence law for the p implies q part was P implies Q. What was the equivalent law? Not P or Q. Okay. So, let us take the first case. So, we have to do P implies Q that is true implies true. What we will get? True implies true is equivalent to not true because P is true or true, q is also true. Okay, So, this is therefore equivalent to false or true Okay, and this is equivalent to true because false or true gives us true. So, this result is valid. If we check for both of the values are false, say this is false and say this is also false, Okay, then we change this as false and this also false. So, this becomes true and this remains as false. True or false gives us true. Okay. So, all these results are derived in this way. Okay. And then, P if and only if Q. What was the equivalent law for that? P if and only if Q was equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies P. So, this was the equivalent law for P if and only if Q and using the AND operation in between these two, we get this result. Okay. So, we get this result. Next, we solve for the right hand side of the second case. So, that is P or Q. So, we get using the OR operation this result and using the AND operation this result. And performing the implication operation over these two columns, we finally get our final result. And we see that this column and this column gives us the same result. Okay. Hence, these two columns are equivalent. So, P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to P or Q implies P and Q. Next, we will solve this problem using another method known as the method of substitution. Okay. So, our method 2 
is the method of substitution substitution method okay p if and only if q is logically equivalent to p implies q and q implies p this is the biconditional elimination rule which we have already seen here and in our previous lecture so this is equivalent to not p or q and not q or p okay this is again equivalent to not p and not q or not p and p or q and not q or q and p okay so this step we got from the conditional elimination rule that was the p implies q is equivalent to not p or q okay and this part we got from the distributive property or distributive laws okay we divide all this means not p and not q okay then this is the or operation or this is the or operation not p and p okay then this or operation q and not q and then the last one q and p okay so the next step is not p or q and these two results will vanish as this is not p and p and this is q and not q means negation of the same element using the and operation then we are left with not p or q or q and p so this q and p can again be written as p and q so i am just showing you with some extra steps as it is clear to all it will be clear to everyone okay so this is done by the commutative rule okay finally we get p or q implies p and q So this was this was our task to prove, which was given here. That is, P or Q implies P and Q. We got we started from here and reached here. Hence, our result is shown. So this was precisely our chapter of mathematical reasoning or mathematical logic. And you will probably get one question from this chapter, which will consist of four marks in your IIT JE exam. Okay, and this. the questions from this chapter generally remain very easy you will see many more examples when we will solve our different problems in our problem sessions okay so practice well and try to score the marks from this chapter okay thank you